right, we're on to section five brushes. Um, we're a little less than halfway through the guide. And what we're gonna do is I want to create um, a Bartak brush. I've zoomed way in, I can show you, on my grid. I want to make this, you know, about um, a little less than an inch high in reality. Um, so I'm gonna be using my eighth scale boxes. Um, I am going to create my shape um, as an object. I don't want it to be a path. That makes it a little bit easier when you're creating a brush. And I'm just going to use my pen tool to create a, a B shape. So you can see, I just used my guide here in the middle um, and created half a V, just like we've been doing with all of our other sketching. You only have to really create half of what you're drawing, and then you can just reflect it across. All right, so now I have my V shape um, reflected across this middle line. Now you can obviously adjust it, like this one looks a little wide, fine for what I'm doing here just to show you, but you can obviously edit it from this point and then we reflect it. But let's join this together. Now that we've created our shape and we've joined the points, let's go ahead and create a brush. So I'm gonna go over here into my windows and I'm gonna click on brushes. If it's not showing, you can go into window and then brushes here. And I'm going to click on this little um, icon right here. It's like a little piece of paper with like a leafed page. And I'm going to, while my object is selected, click this. And what's gonna come up is this little dialog box. Um, from this dialog box, I'm going to choose pattern brush and I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's gonna come up and show me basically a preview of what I've created. And now this is like a really good window where you can rename your brush. Um, that's really great when you want to keep organized. Maybe you have a bar tack and then you have a cover stitch and it's really great to just name it here so that you have it all organized in your brushes panel because it's going to populate here. And we're not going to mess with any of these other options. That's going to be later on uh, in an advanced guide that I create. Um, you don't need to do anything with this here. Um, and you can also do some auto-generated between uh, for corners, and you can also do ends. Again, that's something that's a little more advanced. We're not gonna worry about that right now. So just what's, what's selected here is fine for what we're gonna be doing. All the pre-selected options pretty much are going to be great for just creating stitch brushes and simple brushes that you're using. One of the things you do want to change, though, is under colorization, under method, change it to hue shift and make sure that the key color that's selected is the color that your object is filled with. So, for example, mine is filled with black. Um, and you can use this little eyedropper if it doesn't have the correct color selected. And what this is gonna do is make it so that we can change the color of the brush at any point without having to make a new one. All right, so let's hit okay. And then let's just test out that our brush was created. So I'm using my pen tool and I'm creating a path. So I just have my path here and I'm gonna hit the brush that we just created. So it looks like it did work. And the reason why there's a little line through it is because I have black um, selected as a fill. So if I just get rid of that, that'll go away. But you can see, because we selected hue shift, we can change um, the color of our brush just by going into our swatches panel, which is really great, saves a ton of time. Um, you can also use um, the brush tool the paintbrush over here to use your brush without having to go in and select it. 
We won't be using that for this for any reason. Um, that's more of a graphic design tool. You won't be using it for technical flats, but just so you know, um, when you are using the brush tool, it's selecting whatever brush you have selected um, from your brushes panel. All right, so now you can see how the repeat looks. And what it's doing is it is repeating after the edge of the object. So because there is a corner all the way out here, that's where it's going to begin repeating and add the next object next to it. So if you want to make it appear as though they overlap, all you have to do is make this edge flat. Now there's a bunch of different methods for doing so. Um, especially when you have a more complicated brush that you are creating or working with. But for the purposes of this video, I'll just show you sort of an easy way to um, either draw it at first or change it from what you have. So you could either draw it this way at the beginning, if that's what you're intending to um, make it look like, like it's overlapping, or um, you can just simply use your cut tool, which is C, and we're going to cut off this corner here and I'm going to cut here. And I've just used this guide to make sure that um, I'm straight when I'm doing so. So now I can just delete this. And remember that we don't have to do it to the other side. We can just flip it, reverse it, and um, use it on the other side. So I'm just gonna delete that. So now we have just these two paths here. Let's join them. So they're joined on this side here. And then, Let's reflect. And then let's join again. Oops. And now what we can do is just follow that same method to create a new brush. And what you will see is, let's just copy this so you can see the difference. that now it appears as though they overlap. All right, so now let's move into creating a brush library. So in order to create a brush library, what you're gonna wanna do um, is go into this little menu up here in the right-hand corner of your brushes window and what you're gonna do is hit Save Brush Library. Um, be sure when you're creating an actual library that you've deleted anything out of here that you don't want saved in your library. For example, all of these things are defaulted into the library that comes with Illustrator. So if you're creating a new library that's your Stitches library, for example, you probably don't want these other things in there. So if you just select them and um, hit this little trash can down here, it'll delete them out of the library you're about to save, but it won't delete them permanently. So don't worry about just deleting these things off of there. Once you have this um, how you want it, go ahead and go up into that little menu and hit Save Brush Library. And where you're gonna want to save it is in under Applications. So if I go out here, you can see this is um, my library, then applications. So I'm basically just going into Adobe and then it's titled EN underscore US and you want to save it under brushes. And all of these folders are already stored within Adobe Illustrator. So you can see I already have a test brush um, Illustrator file here. And all you have to do is name it, hit save, and I'm not going to do that because I already have one. And then once, you, um, once you've done that, then you can go into your brushes and you can look under, um, for me, it's under user defined, um, and you can see where your test brushes are. Sometimes they'll be out here. It just kind so all you have to do is go into your library and hit um, your test brushes and it'll pull up a window. Mine keeps coming onto my other screen. 
and you'll see you'll see that these are the ones that are in the guide and so this is my test library that i used to create you can create any sort of library that you want to and those brushes you can pull up in any illustrator file which makes it super easy and super simple um, to just be able to go in and grab those whenever you need them instead of having them stored in a document that you would have to open and copy from.